only God can create. Lucifer wants to be like God, but he can't create. He hasn't created a thing a day in his existence. God didn't invent sin. God didn't re invent rebellion. That is the fact that he gave Lucifer a choice to honor and obey him, to bring him glory. God says, no, I'm going to give them a choice. They can follow me or they can reject me. God says, if you follow me, you'll bring me glory. And I'm going to give them a choice. He gave Lucifer and the angels a choice. He gave Adam and Eve a choice. Welcome to the Creation Today Show, where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching. Your host, Eric Hovind, affirms the ultimate authority of God's Word, the truth of creation, and why it matters to you. It was the end of summer that I got in my Ford Ranger five-speed pickup truck and started a four-day drive across the country all by myself. I drove right here from Pensacola, Florida, all the way out to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I spent the next year of my life at what was at the time a brand new school called Jackson Hole Bible College. And to this day, I would not trade that year of education for anything in my life. It was foundational to everything I now do. I am thrilled to have the president of the college and one of the head teachers, Pastor Don Landis, joining me. We're going to try to get through his entire course called Two Kingdoms in just 60 minutes because this one class, this one course uh, is is it reveals the unseen war that is taking place all around us. So please help me welcome my friend, the president of Jacksonville Bible College, Pastor Don Landis. Pastor Don, thanks for hanging out with me today, sir. Good to be here with you today. I loved Jacksonville <laughs> Bible College, and you've spent the last, what now, 26 years, uh, 27 maybe, teaching students and passing on this information to the next generation. Uh, can you give me a little synopsis of how Jacksonville Bible College has gone over the last 25 years? It's been a uh, ride out here in the West with all the rodeos. You take a deep, <laughs> seat, deep seat in the saddle and you hang on for dear life. That's and right. uh, we've been here in Jackson for about 52 years running the camp that Bev and Lee and I had the privilege to start uh, Rocky Mountain Lodge. And uh, then uh, back a piece, uh, we started the idea. Some other people came to us with an idea also, and we started Jackson Hole Bible College, a one-year program, a foundational, apologetic in nature, and uh, it's been a ride. We just said goodbye to our last student about a half hour ago, oh. and uh, then now we get ready for the summer season and uh, then start uh, getting ready for the Bible College next uh, this coming August. Well, I have been privileged to come back every year for the last, I want to say 13 to 15 years. I got to go count it up, but be able to come back and actually teach there at the college and have the students for a week. And I love, love, love my time there because of all the memories and my time with all of your students that you guys bring in. So thank you for letting me be there and take a little bit of time to invest in the students' lives. I, I, uh, I trust it's a blessing to them. I know it's a blessing to me year after year. And one of my favorite classes, though, and my daughter was there, uh, not this past year, but the year before, and her favorite class undoubtedly was your course on two kingdoms. I want to talk about that today because there really is, I think, th there's a war going on that I call the unseen war, and a lot of people aren't, aren't ready for this, aren't, aren't aware of this, don't realize that every action they take is actually fighting for one side or the other. And you break it down into two kingdoms, which is foundational. Can you open that subject up? I don't know if we can get through the whole course in 60 minutes. That's going to be tough. But uh, let's see how much we can get through of this concept that there are two kingdoms. How do you like to introduce the, the thought? Uh, probably some premise idea here. Um, at the Bible College, one thing that we believe sets us apart from a lot of schools and uh, Perhaps one reason that Ken Ham, my good friend at AIG, says that he he doesn't know a school like this anywhere, and yet we're so tiny. But one of the things we do is we focus on two ideas. One is the particulars of the Bible, and the verse for that is rightly divide the word of truth. 
And uh, that's the minuscule, the details, the grammar, the Hebrew, the Greek. The other is we uh, also focus on Paul's statement in the book of Acts, where he talks about uh, he delivered to the Ephesians the whole counsel of God. That is the big picture. And um, God uh, is amazing. He is bigger than we think he is. He's, he's larger and more uh, unbelievable and more incredible and awesome than we can even understand. That was yesterday's message at the church, and I might throw that into you here as we go through some of our chat here today. So uh, here at the college, we want to focus on the big picture. What is the big picture? The big picture is that there is a God, uh, and everything goes back to him. The Bible says that he created everything. There wasn't one thing that was created that he did not make. All things were made by and for him. And uh, Satan comes along and wants to be God. He wants to actually be like God, which is a different twist, because he doesn't want to be opposite God. He wants to be like God. I will raise my throne above the stars of God in the recesses of the, recesses of the north. I will be like the Most High. So Satan's desire was to be like God. And uh, he looked at his own beauty. His heart was lifted up in his own pride, and he rebelled against God. That began at that moment, the two kingdoms, the one kingdom, capital G, the true God, who is the creator of all things, sustainer of all things, the end of all things. Uh, and then here at this college now, we're really pushing a pretty exciting addendum to that. He is not only, not as everything go, not as, not just as everything go back to him, but everything now should be seen from him into creation and the whole universe. And then Lucifer <clears throat> wants to duplicate that. God has worshipers. Satan wants worshipers. Uh, God has control over humans in the sense of our believers who are, he's our Lord. He wants people to follow him. He wants his own kingdom. God has a kingdom. Lucifer has, wants a kingdom. And so we have now 6,000 years from rebellion of Lucifer and a third of the angels, we believe, followed Lucifer, made a one-time decision. They can't go back. One-time decision to follow Lucifer. And the other two-thirds of the angels, we believe, stayed with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, now we have this battle going on between them. And the playground or the battleground is the hearts of men. And God comes to us and uh, to redeem us and, and died for us on the cross to redeem men back to himself. When Adam and Eve sin, uh, they, uh, I'm sorry, when, when Lucifer sinned, he left God. And now he got Adam and Eve, uh, tempted them to follow him. They actually thought they were doing their own thing. But there are only two gods possible, capital G and small g, Lucifer and God, God and Lucifer. And so when Adam and Eve decided to do what they thought was best, they became their own gods. And uh, that means they're no longer following the one true God, which means they're indirectly following Lucifer. So we know in the Bible, theologically, that Adam and Eve took on a new lineage. Jesus says to people in the New Testament, he says, you are of your father, the devil. So Adam and Eve, all of a sudden, their lineage came from Lucifer, not from God. And now God wants to redeem mankind back to a relationship with human beings. And so to do that, of course, he died on the cross, buried and rose again. And when we trust God and are born again by the Holy Spirit, we now are members of the family of God. Fascinating. And we are now children of God. That's amazing. So when you and I trusted Jesus, we now change lineage again back to God himself. And it's deeper and wider than we had at first in the garden. Adam and Eve were just created beings. Now, I, as a believer, I know some in the re listening right now are going to say, the guy's squirrely. Okay, hey, hear me out. Now that I've trusted Christ, I'm his child forever. I'm not God. I'll never be God. But I'm being transformed by the Holy Spirit into the image of the firstborn, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the firstborn of the family now, and of all of us who are believers. And I'll be spending eternity in the Father's house as well as perhaps other planets and the huge universe that he's going to do new for us. And I'm his member of his family. I'm, this is amazing. 
some people ask, why did God allow all this sin to take place and the rebellion to take place? I can't answer all that question, but I can give some hints. Had God, Adam and Eve, not sinned, today you and I would be following God out of a nature that was open to God and, and created by God and no rebellion against God. But we'd only be created beings. Now, because of the sin that came and redemption that comes, now through the birth of the Holy Spirit, I'm literally a member of the body of Christ. I'm literally a child of the King, child of God. Now I have the capacity, much greater than just a created being, to know, enjoy this God forever. Now, the battle is between God, the true God, and when I, everybody uses the word God today, but I'm speaking of Yahweh, I'm speaking of uh, the God of the Old Testament, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the true God. Uh, the Trinity is involved there. We have the Trinity. God is three persons, but he's only one God. And this God is after the hearts of men. To get us to trust him, draw us to himself, we must believe he has done all the work of redemption, and he offers us this free gift. In the meantime, Lucifer is doing all he can to hang on to those who are still of his lineage. They're born after his pattern. And uh, human beings, my parents gave me a humanness, uh, have a physical body, but they could not give me a new spiritual body because they didn't have that to give. Even though they were believers in God, they cannot pass that on. They That wouldn't even give to me the ability to be the child of God, but the Holy Spirit does that. And now I'm in this world <laughs> and still living with the old body. So there's struggle, as Paul said, between the old and the new. And uh, someday it'll be gone. God's in the process of sanctifying all of us, turning us into the image of the firstborn, preparing us for when we'll be with him forever. And the world around us, unsaved people, they can't understand this. There's no way they can understand this. They're natural men, human beings. But uh, the Bible says a natural man can't understand the things of God. So they're directly, sometimes consciously, and indirectly, subconsciously following Lucifer. And his pattern, he's a murderer, he's a hatred person, he hates human beings because human beings are all made in the image of God. He hates children because they're human beings and uh, innocent uh, to a certain point. And he hates Christians because we're children of God. So Christians don't understand that you and I are constantly, we have the ability to make decisions that go with the old nature. Well, when I go with the old nature, I'm then going back to the patterns of the unsaved person, capable of doing anything an unsaved person can do, incapable of doing anything to please God. When I walk in the Spirit, which I can do by an act of the will, I'm told that when God commands us to walk in the Spirit, He can't command us to do something He hasn't given us the ability to do. And I walk in the Spirit, and then I fulfill the, the deeds of the Spirit instead of the deeds of the flesh, and I have character of Jesus, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And uh, so God is in the business of wanting men to believe him. Now, it gets bigger and wider than we can even imagine. Uh, I have just uh, now six weeks into a new study on uh, the, the high chapters, high point chapters of the book of Isaiah, starting with chapter 40. And uh, yesterday was just a phenomenal time, chapter 45. We're seeing things we just didn't pay attention to like we should have before. Over and over and over in those texts, God keeps saying, I'm the only God. There's none before me. There's none after. You can't reverse what I do. You can't stop my plan. You can't unset me. I'm not worried about anything. There isn't any other God. When you set up other gods in your life, idols, Keep note this, God says, they're worthless. They can't even stand up by themselves. If they fall over, you got to put them back up, which means you have to supply everything your idol needs. The Hindus do this. They have to feed their idols, bring food to them. In America, with idols that we can make out of sex or, or golf or anything else that God has created for our good, uh, entertainment, rest and relaxation, when those become our idols, we have to sustain them. And God says, 
you'll never, I make you a promise, so help me God, God swears by himself, you'll never be satisfied and fulfilled uh, in a worldview where you have these other gods, because there isn't any other gods, not one, only him. And we are constantly, and I am, let me speak just for me, the battle in my life struggle is by going for the desires of this body. I know I'm preaching. And the desires of this body, instead of walking in the spirit, then I follow the desires of God, the Holy Spirit. And that's a tension. That's a war that's going on for my allegiance and for my commitment to Jesus. Can't change my salvation on that, praise him. But I can do things that would follow the evil side rather than following God's side and then bring him glory. The unsaved world cannot commend themselves to the holiness of God for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us can match his glory. None of us. And I can't do it in the old nature, but I can do it as the new down land, as new creature in Christ with the Holy Spirit in my heart, my life, Jesus there too. And we bring glory to God in our life. Now, here at the college, we do subtrails. I won't do them right now, but if you want to ask me about them, we do subtrails and we track Satan's kingdom. Listen carefully. This is real simple. Only God can create. Lucifer wants to be like God, but he can't create. He hasn't created a thing a day in his existence. God didn't invent sin. God didn't re invent rebellion. That is the fact that he gave Lucifer a choice to honor and obey him, to bring him glory. God could make puppets. They could dance around on strings, but the glory we would bring him could be pointed back to God and say, you just made them do this. God says, no, I'm going to give them a choice, an honest choice. They can follow me or they can reject me. If they reject me, they're going to bring me glory too because I cannot be upset, unsettled, unthroned. So in the end, their rebellion will show my holiness. In the meantime, God says, if you follow me, you'll bring me glory. And I'm going to give him a choice. He gave Lucifer and the angels a choice. He gave Adam and Eve a choice. Decision. The fact that God says, draw a circle and put everything I am inside. Love, joy, I am life. I am life living. Life begets life. I created you, Adam and Eve. And if you disobey me, don't eat the tree. So simple. Don't eat the tree. Why not? You'll be going against what I am and what I said. And what is the opposite of God? Sin. Best definition of sin. Anything that's the opposition of the God who created us. And they ate the tree. What did they do when they ate the tree? God says, here's what's going to happen. You're going to die. They die spiritually. Their marriage died. Their relationship died. Their relationship with God died. They start hiding from God. Every aspect of their life was affected by that fall. They weren't as bad as they could be, but every aspect of their life, psychological, emotional, physical, spiritual, uh, uh, mental, everything started dying. I actually think Eve looked, uh, Adam looked at Eve and she, he didn't know what death was. So he didn't know what to expect, but she didn't look any different for a couple of moments there, did she? But she started dying physically immediately. Ah, and someday we have to die physically as a, a fulfillment of that truth. And she died spiritually immediately, gave the fruit to Adam. He died spiritually. And now, boy, they want it. We want to get back to all we lost. That's human beings, education, uh, doing things, picking up trash, trying to do good, trying to commend ourselves to God, be moral, or just the opposite and curse God to get rid of the conscience. No matter what we try and do, we can't get back to God. I mean, we're dead. How can something dead bring life? So we need the Holy Spirit. We need God who's going to come to us. We're born again. And I'm a new person now. And the lost, the lost world can't do this. Now we track those. I want to get, that's my premise. That's my beginning. We track this. We can track it in everything that God does. We look at marriage for five hours in our creator God class. It's unreal. My own experience, and now I'm studying, what are the principles? Jesus said, eat from the good tree, you get, bad, you good, good, get good fruit. Eat from the bad tree, who's that? Satan's tree. There's only two trees. 
in Matthew 7. Matter of fact, there's only two paths in Matthew 7. There's only two groups of people. There's only two foundations. Why? Because there's only two gods. One real, one offering us love and joy and peace and life and eternity with him. And the other one, wanting to give us the same things that God offered us to enjoy, can grab and butter, steak, sexual issues, joy, pleasure. The Garden of Eden literally means in the Hebrew pleasure. He puts Adam and Eve in a place for pleasure. And wow. they do it. And then he forces them out to teach them that you're not going to get really what you're looking for anymore outside of me. No, I'm not saying it's going to duplicate everything. Now, I, I want to do this. I know I'm just talking. And I know you want to ask questions. And this is an interview, et cetera. I'm, I'm setting principle, basic uh, concept down, foundational. God creates Lucifer can't, but he still wants to be like God. So he can only tempt us with what God really wanted us to have. So he can't invent anything new to tempt us with. So he tempts us with what God wants us to have. And now listen, that then becomes immediately a counterfeit of God. Everything Satan does is a counterfeit. If we don't understand this simplicity of the Godhead, who over and over says, you can't do this without me, you must trust me. And sometime, Eric, and another time, we've got to talk about yesterday's message because I'm studying this. I've been a Christian how many years? Moody and all this and good Christian family. And then I'm studying the 45th chapter. And over and over in the first four chapters, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, he goes to humans. He goes to the nation of Israel and says, you're in trouble. You rejected me. You're not doing what I want you to do. And now you're going to be judged if you keep doing that. I'm going to discipline you. Then he goes to the nations, right in those chapters, I'm going to deal with the nations the same way. And uh, you, you better listen because there's no hope for you. And then he says how good he is. I created everything. I created everything. I made you enjoy. And so he says, now watch how I take care of you. And then he ends the chapter, one of the chapters, and you're still not listening to me. And so God is constantly all through the Bible, pondering, getting us to ponder, getting us to think. The benefits of following Satan, the old nature, and the benefits of following him so that we would choose to follow him. Uh, Eric, 10 seconds, the 45th chapter. He makes statements like you think are in the New Testament, and they are. He talks about uh, in the 45th chapter, um, they're seeing, uh, and he's going to do this in chapter 9 of Romans. Same phrases he uses there. And he uses the illustration of Israel and then Gentiles coming in Isaiah 45. And you think the Jews are going to get a little upset because God isn't treating them special above everybody else. And they're going to question him. And then in nine of, of Romans, hey, I, I'm the potter. And it's a heavy chapter. Everybody avoids. Uh, I hardened Pharaoh's heart. He hardened his heart. I hardened it. He says to Pharaoh, why did I raise you up? To bring me glory, to show you that when a person rejects me, this is what my word is true. And what is he saying? It's solemn. Now, this is the two battles. This is the warfare. God says in Romans 9, who, I'm going to paraphrase, but you don't, have to, you don't have to add much at all. Who do you think you are? How dare you question me on how I handle the things I have created? You think, he said, I know what you're thinking. I'm unfair. If election's true, I'm unfair. And God does not answer in intelligent language that we can comprehend. There's a reason for that. Because we cannot comprehend him. Because he's infinite and I'm only finite. So God gives an illustration of an antinomy where he says, I created man the way I, I didn't love Esau. As a matter of fact, before he was born, I hated him. And Jacob, before he was born, before the boys did anything, nothing to do with works, I, God, chose who I would have mercy on and chose who I would not have mercy on. And my goodness, we look at that. Now, to your listeners, please hear this. If you overemphasize, and how do you overemphasize? You only take that truth from God, and it is a truth. Election is true. 
If you only take that, you're going to throw away human responsibility because you are really a puppet. But the Bible is packed with another truth. The other truth is you are responsible over and over in Isaiah 45 and in, in Romans 9. Please believe. You must believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Uh, confess with your mouth what you believe and you'll be saved. Uh, Jesus, uh, John 3, God the Father sent his only son so that those who believe, you say, well, God makes them believe. No, he doesn't make us believe. We must do that. And his grace makes it possible for us to do that. By the way, those are two opposites. Try and bring them together and they don't fit. And you know what God says? Let me explain it to you. You know what he says? He doesn't say that. He, in, in, in Isaiah 45, he doesn't say that. Here's his response. You have no right to question me. Let me say it a different way. If I did explain it, you could not understand it. Because I'm God. Did I start somewhere here saying everything goes back to God? Did I start here saying there is no one like him inside and outside the universe? None of our gods even come close. They, they can't even be compared to him. And God says, "That's here's who I am. And so you have no right to question me. You do have the ability to believe me. We're wondering now if even heaven is long enough. I don't think it is. Wow. I learn everything about God. Because he's eternal. A million wow. years from now, he's still eternal. And we're still finite. That's why heaven can't have any disappointment in it. So what's what's this whole thing about going to heaven or hell? What's this whole thing about of lordship of Christ? What's this whole thing about of trusting Jesus as your savior so you could be his child or rejecting him and be separated from him for eternity? What's it about? God making a statement. I am the Lord God. Trust me. There's another voice saying, you can get what God wants you to have without him. Trust me, Satan says, and I'll give it to you without having to give up your way and your will. Never tells Adam and Eve that when they make a decision to go with him, they're really following him and being their own gods, the same thing he did. Now, questions. The stars, Shale Hades, where people go when they die. Uh, ancient man, God's, we spend a lot of time on ancient man. We, God says he created Adam and Eve. Well, the further you go back in human history, the more intelligent we find human beings to be. Doing things we can't explain today. If evolution's true, the further we go back in history, I'll tell you what you'll find. Men dragging women around by the hair and eating raw meat because they haven't discovered fire yet. And if you go back further than that with human beings, we come out of the slime no value, no reason, no purpose in life, nothing. We return to the earth. We return to slime. Actually, we live slime ways. So the whole battle is what? One God and a false one. It's overwhelming. It's very simple concept, but it changes everything. Uh, you have a question you want to jump in? I haven't given you any opportunity to... I, I'm sitting here going, I hope Zoom and Facebook and YouTube let us keep streaming for the next two weeks. And I'm just going to be quiet because th this is it, guys. This is the big picture. This is what's really going on in your life. This is really what's going on in my life. This is really what's taking place in our world today is it's a battle of two world views. I, I, I wish everybody caught everything you just said. And if you not go back and rewatch this because Satan cannot create. So therefore all he can do is pervert. God wants obedience. Satan can only do disobedience. God makes a temple for worship. Satan wants to pervert that. Satan wants his own temple. God wants worship and praise. Satan goes, okay, well then I want worship and praise and wants to pervert what you give as worship to God so that you praise and worship him. And you may, he's got you fooled into thinking it's really worshiping yourself. 
No, it's worshiping him. God wants sacrifice. So Satan goes, okay, I want that too, because I want to be like God. I want sacrifice. God wants love. Satan goes, okay, I want love. I'm like, Pastor Don, if people saw this, and I love your rabbit trails, and I, I love that this is the overarching principle that every single thing you guys teach goes into this, into these principles. I, I want to take some of the rabbit trails, but before I do, I got to let social media go. Social media, I wish you would hang out for the rest of this with Pastor Don and I over at creationtoday.org. Please come on over to creationtoday.org and get the rest of this show. Plus, you get access when you partner with us. You get access to everything we've ever done. Another one of his classes was uh, on... Um, uh, the Genius of Ancient Man, a book that he wrote, and you got to go find that show on under creation today and order that book because the Genius of Ancient Man gets into what he was just saying. We used to be much smarter than we are today. We used to have more knowledge than what we have today. We are going downhill. We are not going uphill. And I, and I tell you, this is why we need as a culture to get back to God and his word so that we can go back uphill by understanding and studying and knowing God. Oh, man. Uh, okay. I got to let social media go, Pastor Dunn. Everything goes back to God. So yes. if I follow God, he's life, joy, yes. sound mind. Paul says, renew your mind. If I follow Lucifer, he destroys the mind. There's no right or wrong with Lucifer's worldview. So today, what's our culture? Woke and CRT and postmodernism and all well, woke is, is postmodernism exhibited. So what is happening? Chaos. Uh, people are saying dual things out of the same mouth. They have chaos in their hearts and minds and anarchy. They have no hope, no joy, and they're they're just living death. Every every everything I do in life is sourced. Every decision I make is sourced in one of these two kingdoms. And if I don't know that, I'll play with sin. I'll play with temptation. I can handle this. And God says, No, you can't. It didn't right. save you, and you can't. It can't help you live the godly life, at all. And and we don't realize that every thought we have and every decision we make is either building one kingdom or the other. Everything we do, everything you do, the way you talk to your spouse, the way you raise your kids, the way you work, your ethic, your your character, who you really are when nobody's looking, everything comes down to. What worldview, what, which, which kingdom are you building? It's either God or it is not God, and that is Satan. Those are the only two. There's, not, there's no neutral in there. And Pastor Don, that's what I, I fear in the church. I got to let social media go, but we, we got to talk about that. That's something I fear in the church is, is churches that people that are going to church, Christ, people claiming Christianity and really going, well, this is just kind of neutral. This, is, this isn't a binary thing. This is just, I just do this. It's, it's neither. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Everything is one or the other. Hey, Jesus, I'll tell you what, Jesus thinks of the neutral, the middle. OK, you're either for him or you're against him. Now, I can either be in a spirit and then I'm doing and living as the spirit is living in my life. Jesus, Jesus in my heart. When I'm in the flesh, I'm doing the opposite. I catch this. When God comes and says there's no neutral. There is no neutral. We think, hey, I'm not a Jesus freak. Christian, I'm not a Jesus freak, though. Or we think as a Christian, I'm not a demon worshiper. I'm not a Satan worshiper. I, there's a middle ground. There's a balance. There's a neutrality to this. You know what Jesus calls that? He calls it vomit. He says, I would have you have you hot or cold. If you were cold, it would be easier to show you that the fruit in your life is coming from non-me, not me. But when you're in the middle trying to be good, trying to say to God, I, watch me, God, I'll be good like you want me to be. By the way, that's a greater insult to God than raising a fist to him. Because you're telling God you can duplicate his holiness and his righteousness and his goodness and his love and his life. And Paul goes after those harder in the first two chapters of Romans than he does those who rebel against God. Because we say, hey, we're going to be good like God. And we think that's balanced. That's in the middle. And Jesus says, I'd rather you have a hot or cold or I'll spew you out of my mouth. It's distasteful. Don't fall for that. Man. Okay. Social media. 
I'm sorry. I got to let you guys go. I love you. Can't wait for next week's show with you live right here at 12 noon. Uh, please like, subscribe, and, and share all those good things. Uh, I'd love you to take some of these rabbit trails that we're about to take with Pastor Don, which by the way, Pastor Don, from what I hear from the students every year, that is still their favorite. You're in the middle of something and they ask a question, boom, bunny trail, and you're off. And I, I, that's probably some of my favorite learning is Pastor Don's bunny trails. So we're going to jump on some of those. Can't wait to see you next week. If you want to get the rest of this, come to creationtoday.org. I would love it. If, you're, if you have a child that's getting ready to go to college, I cannot recommend enough a one-year program at Jackson Hole Bible College, jhbc.edu, jhbc.edu. Can you imagine your child getting this kind of teaching for a year to get to get an, a whole year of education and truly understanding who God is, why we are here, why we exist? Please check out jhbc.edu. Look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, please go share the gospel with somebody. They probably need to hear that. And today would be a great day to share it with them. God bless.